Some men aspire to change the world. They do this out of pure care for humanity and its well-being. However, being able to make an impact takes traits such as courage, humility, selflessness, strength, and patience. Barry and Fry was a living example of all these traits and more. He did what no other man wanted to do. He risked his life for others. He put his reputation on the line for the sake of a stronger mankind. During the horrors of the 1940s Holocaust, Jews and other ethnic and racial groups became subject to the Nazis' inhumane rule. As this cruel time period developed, American journalists, Vary and Fry, in the Emergency Response Committee, took a stand against ethnic cleansing and emerged as heroes by risking their lives to save thousands of Jews in Nazi France. The heroic actions of Fry and the ERC members protected over 2,000 Jewish lives. The world would not be the same place that it is today without Mr. Varian Fry. Varian has always stood up for what he believed in, which was extremely evident during his childhood. Varian was an abnormal child, to say the least. He was born on October 15, 1907, in New York City. His parents were a non-factor in most of his childhood. His father was a stockbroker on Wall Street, and his mother was a teacher, who was often sick, so he rarely saw her. He was raised by his aunts. His father was his largest role model as a child. Other than not seeing his parents, he had a routine childhood. He eventually made his way up to Harvard University. While at Harvard, he founded a literary magazine. His magazine got him expelled from the school, but was later allowed back in. Soon after he graduated from Harvard, Varian and his wife Aline moved to New York City. In this city, Aline taught while Varian had a variety of publishing jobs that took him from Scholastic Magazine to The Living Age, a journal that was concentrated on foreign affairs. This foreign affairs journal gave Varian access to what was happening in Europe. He decided that he needed to go and see what was happening in Europe for himself. In May of 1935, Fry departed for a three-month trip to Berlin, Germany, so that he could see the conditions that were going on in Europe for himself. One night, Fry heard screaming and cries from his hotel room, so he went out into the streets of Berlin to see what was happening. To quote Fry, the Germans were cheering, when Jewish blood spurts from the knife, then things will go even better. Additionally, Fry saw Germans beating up old Jewish men and destroying Jewish businesses. Fry thought that these actions were horrible. Therefore, while in Germany, Fry met with Ernest Hesfingel, who was a German-American Harvard graduate, and now was high up in the propaganda ministry. Hasfingel told him that the more radical Nazi leaders, Hitler and Goebbels among them, were determined to exterminate the Jews. Fry knew now that he needed to take a stand against Hitler in Germany. To quote Fry, he said it was my duty to help. Fry returned to the United States. He had one goal. He wanted to draw attention to what was happening in Germany. He tried to write about his experiences, but the American people did not believe him. Although many people did not believe him, he quickly found a powerful ally. Miss Eleanor Roosevelt, wife to President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. She was immediately interested in Varian's cause. Varian constantly kept her informed on what was going on, and after he joined the Emergency Rescue Committee, he wrote to her saying, Since I wrote you, a large committee has been formed under the chairmanship of Dr. Frank Kingdon. Known as the Emergency Rescue Committee, it has already raised a considerable sum of money for the relief of political refugees caught in France. For I did not think that he was the best man to go to Europe, but he said, I have volunteered to go myself and shall do so if no more suitable person can be found. But there are many reasons why I am not an entirely suitable person. My French and German are both halting. I have published things which have aroused the ire of the German government, and I have had no experience whatsoever in detective work. However, Varian was destined to go. On August 15, 1940, Varian arrived in Marseille, France, with only $3,000 in his pocket. When he arrived, he immediately began to get to work. He went to the American Embassy to ask for visas to the United States, but he was surprised as he had no cooperation. The Vichy government had put large amounts of pressure on the American government not to interfere. Since Varian had no help from the United States, he was left to figure out what to do on his own. Soon after, Fry met with Dr. Frank Boone, who was a representative of the Jewish Labor Committee. He gave Varian a number of emergency U.S. visitor visas, but they were not enough. Boone then told Varian a secret. The only way out of France was through the border of Spain. One thing was for sure, 
Varian would have a very tough job. In the beginning weeks, Varian had successfully networked. Jews heard about Varian's vision and quickly started to show up at his hotel room. Eventually, this became too overwhelming, so Varian started to hire trusted staff. He also named his organization the Century American Dissociores, or the American Relief Center. These activities were not unnoticed by the French authorities. This began the beginning of a long road that Varian underwent with the French government. On numerous occasions, the French police raided Varian's officers, but every time he outwitted them and was able to destroy all evidence of illegal actions. Although he removed evidence, the French authorities knew what Varian was doing, and they did not want Varian to remain in their country, as he constantly broke their laws. This constant overwatch made Varian more secretive. Eventually, the demand became too large for Varian's hotel room, so they moved into an office. The office allowed them to see more people each day, which was good, as the staff had the principle, the wider a road is, the more traffic will be generated. They truly wanted to help as many people as they could, and that they did. The new office created a plethora of new applicants. The new applicants made Varian and the ERC start to do daring things. Varian then turned to Justice Rosenberg to help out. I was a courier boy. In other words, I was running errands, except those were not ordinary errands. These were errands to run with false papers, money, uh, various documents uh, to try to get to the refugees who were trying to get some way out of occupied Germany. Justice, Varian, and the other center employees were constantly turning to the black market as a way to keep up ends meet. They constantly worked outside of the law so that they could save as many people as possible. The ERC had seven specific escape routes, four of which went through Spain in some way. They also went through Cuba, France, and Algeria. These routes only lasted so long as the French authorities and the American government began to talk about ways to extract Varian from Marseille. However, Varian never stopped, as he used extra legal procedures to help the Jews escape. It got to a point where the ERC, the organization that sent Varian to Marseille, stopped approving of his actions. The French government's police chief, began writing to the United States State Department on ways to extract Varian from France. The State Department of the United States sent a letter to Fry for his organization to shut down, but they never did. This led to possible extraction by force. Varian quickly heard about the news for his extraction, which led him to contact the ERC in America. He wanted them to send him a replacement. When they were sending a replacement, Varian received advice from an American paper boy, who told him to take a vacation away from the center, as he did not want to be kicked out before his replacement arrived. This was on the theory of out of sight, out of mind. This selfless action taken by Varian allowed the center to stay in operation. Once Fry's replacement arrived in Marseille, Varian quickly trained him, as the French Gestapo forcefully removed the Varian from the country. Varian was then reunited with his wife, Aline, in the United States. In the States, he fought for awareness for what was going on in Germany. He tried to join the military to go and fight, but he was kicked out. Fry just wanted to feel like he was making an impact. In the end, Varian Fry's heroic actions impacted the lives of over 4,000 people, 2,000 of which he brought to safety in free countries. Although he has accomplished numerous historic actions, Fry is not commonly known. He received little recognition for his heroic actions during his lifetime. The only award he received during his life was the Legion of Honor, which was given to him by the French government in 1967. Shortly after receiving the award, Varian unexpectedly passed away. His legacy has never tarnished, however small it might have been. In 1994, he received his highest honor, the Righteous Among the Nations Award, given by Yad Vashem in Israel. He received this award because he was an ordinary American, who summed up the courage and decided to partake in a cause larger than himself. He took a stand against cruelty and took a stand towards justice.